Hi everybody, um, I've had enough interest after last week's video across social media um, for me to make a tutorial on how I do the inserts for my traveler's notebooks. I have one done for this particular set. This is the cover that was used, that was made in last week's video. Um, and these are the types of inserts we're going to be made, or we're going to be making. So these are 9 inches by 4 inches, so that means that we need to cut our paper at 9 by 8. So let me go over the materials that I'm using. So again, this is the book that I made earlier. These are the, going to be the cover pages for the other five books. Very grungy. I love this stack. Um, this is DCWB Old World stack, which I've had in my stash forever. I, I bought a few of these when I back when I was doing a lot of paper crafting. Um, I tend to lean toward the grungy style. So I'm going to sit these out of the way except for one we're going to need. And these are also cut at 9 by 8. Now for the paper inside, you can get a stack like this. Now this will make four booklets. It has 40 pages. And this is a 70 weight cardstock. I think I picked this, or not cardstock, drawing paper. Um, I think I picked this up at Walmart. Pretty cheap. Uh, not expensive at all. But since I make so many of these, I purchased a ream of paper from Amazon. This is ultra white sulfite drawing paper 9 by 12 inch and 70 weight so the same um, same consistency so we're going to need 10 pages of that and i've already pulled that out and now we're going to cut it down to size so this is already nine inches in this direction so i'm going to stack those neatly together and line it up on my mat now you can do this a number of different ways. You can use, if you have paper cutting supplies or paper crafting supplies and you have a paper trimmer and you want to measure it on the paper trimmer and do it that way, by all means do it that way. I'm going to be using a rotary cutter, which I use for paper crafting. Um, I no longer use this style for um, sewing. I use my Martelli rotary cutter. So I retired my old one to paper crafting. So I'm going to be measuring eight inches here using my straight edge and I have a piece of washi tape stuck to it. So I'm going to line this up being careful to get it as straight as possible and then I'm going to use my rotary cutter to cut right along that 8 inch mark. It'll take a few passes to get through all of the paper. Take your time and you'll get it. So another little tip is I do save these stacks of paper and you can make tear off booklets or any number of other things. And let me know if you, if you, if you're not familiar with what a tear off booklet is, it has like the glue at the top and you can just pull a page off as needed. Um, and actually your paper stacks typically come in the form of a tear off booklet. They have a layer, a thin layer of glue right along the edge and you just pull the paper off as needed. So. I keep this stuff to keep from wasting it, and then if I want, I can actually print a grocery list checklist on here, and I can fill out my grocery list and then just tear it off and go to the grocery store, pop the magnet on the back, pop it on the fridge, and you're good to go. I like to use everything. So there are 10 pages, all trimmed. So I'm going to lay my cover right on top of that, and let me grab a few clips, because we are going to clip this. So I can keep this straight when I'm sewing it a couple of different ways. I can clip the edge to make sure that everything stays together the way I, I need it to and draw a line, which is what I'm going to do, is I'm going to measure over four inches and draw a line with a pencil. It can be erased later. And yes, I see that paper sticking over the edge there, just a smidge. I can trim that off later or I can just leave it. It's not that big a deal. I likely will trim it off if this is going to be something that gets sold. So I've got that lined up on my 4 inch mark and I'm just going to draw a light line with my pencil. Now I can clip the other side if I want. I don't really have to. Now we're going to take this over to the machine and sew right down that line.
All right, so I have my stitch length set at about a seven. Um, I like a longer stitch length when doing this because I, while it is absolutely perforating the paper as I'm sewing it, I want those perforations to be further apart. That way, when opening and closing the book or turning pages, it's gonna, it's less likely to tear off on its own. So I am gonna back stitch. So I'm gonna go forward one, back one, and then down that line. All right, and we'll go back over to the counter to show you how I fold up those pages. I'm gonna hit those threads with the lighter just so they don't fray. All right, so I'm gonna pull all of my clips off. And I have one of my bone folder tools um, for book binding here. I do uh, do hand sewn signatures and bind books um, besides doing things like this. It's another one of my little hobbies. But the way we're going to do this is we're going to grab the page, flip it up, kind of press it with our finger, and then we can drag the bone folder down the page. Hold on to that one and pull the next one up. And do the same thing until we have done this with every single page and the cover. So the reason we're using our finger first to make sure that that page is pushed all the way up to the stitches, that way we don't have any pages that come out a little wonky and we get a nice, crisp, straight edge on our booklet. If you don't, if you're not careful about doing that and you just turn the page up and, and press it with the bone folder, then you could get a page that's sort of out of alignment with the rest of them. We don't want to do that. So I'm kind of pulling it with my finger with this hand, and then I'm pressing along that line to push that page as close to the seam as I can. And then I go from there with pressing it with pretty firm pressure. And then once I do this part, wait, there should be, yeah, there is, there it is. It tried not to cooperate with me. <laughs> Once I do this part, I'm going to use my brayer and roll along the seam after I get all of the pages and everything folded. That way I have a nice flat book. And you can, if you have a book press, um, you can press it in the book press or you can make a homemade book press, which I have done with some, a couple of boards and some C-clamps. There we go. Now all of those are folded in. So now I'm going to lay this, or you can hold it up and pull those edges in so that everything is nice and straight. And I'm going to take my brayer and really put some pressure on it. If you don't have a brayer, that's fine. You can press it under a couple of heavy books. Just leave it there for a day or two. And it'll stay flat on its own. So now I know you can see the problem here is my other booklets have a nice clean edge. They don't have the paper sticking out. And the reason that happens, so if, you, if you're making this and you see that the paper's sticking out like that and you're like, oh no, that's not supposed to be like that. It's okay. It, it actually is supposed to be like that until you trim it off. It's because the outer pages are folded around the inner pages and it's basically like displacement is these pages have to go further so they're going to be shorter on this side. So I can see by looking at it from the end that this side is a little bit shorter than the other side so I'm going to use this side as my trim side. So I'm going to lay it down here and line my straight edge up with the edge of the booklet and again you can use an exacto knife, you can use a rotary cutter, you can also use a box cutter, which I'm going to use this time. And I'm not making any, putting a lot of pressure on this because I want to make sure that it's nice and straight. 
and I'm keeping that lined up with the edge of my straight edge. Again, don't put in that much pressure on it. Otherwise, it's going to force your blade to bow or some such like that, and you're not going to get a nice clean edge. We want them all to be the same distance. Almost through all of them. There we go. Now you can see we have a nice straight edge on our book and this booklet is done. So that's two of our booklets done. I'll do the rest of those off camera. I hope this helped explain. If you have any questions for me, absolutely feel free to ask them in the comments section below. If you want to see the video on, or see a video on how to do the tear off booklets, I know it's not sewing related, but I don't just do sewing things, guys. And if you want to see some of the other things that I do, I would be happy to make videos for that. Um, I can do hands on signature videos if you'd like. Um, this is one of my unfinished. I still have to um, pull in all of my threads, but this is one of my little books that I've made. And this is a hand sewn signature. And I used baking twine or baker's twine to sew this one together. I do have waxed linen thread that I, I use, but I just had a little fun with the color in this one. So thank you all for spending a bit of your day with me and I will see you next time.